Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and today, we'll be covering one of the most prominent machine guns used by the German army during the Second World War. It was a weapon that was so heavily used by the German forces that it spanned across the battlefield to infantrymen as well as paratroopers with as many as over a million models produced for the war. So here, we have the MP40 submachine gun made out of Lego. So, the MP40, or the Machine and Pistoli 40, was the most common machine gun of choice for the German army during World War II, and was designed back in 1938 by Heinrich Vollmer, and was eventually produced from 1940 to about 1945 during Germany's war effort. It was an infamous weapon to fight against from the Allies' perspective, and was even nicknamed by the soldiers as the Schmeiser, making reference to Hugo Schmeiser, the original designer of the MP18. And the Allies would actually call the MP40 this, even though Schmeiser had literally nothing to do with the design of the gun, so that's kind of an odd one, but hey, a little piece of history that I kind of wanted to share. Also, before we get into this video, one thing I wanted to point out on this model is the fact that the receiver and pistol grip were both supposed to incorporate a dark brown color originally, but unfortunately, I couldn't complete this due to the fact that not a lot of LEGO pieces for dark brown actually exist. So instead, I started off my model with a reddish brown design, but then ended up getting some weird feedback when I shared my work in progress pictures online. So eventually, I just decided to go with the all black look, made famous by games such as World at War and even Medal of Honor. So to start off, we have the pistol grip area of the SMG, which does include an upside down trigger guard as well as functional trigger. But what's pretty unique about it is that the inner part of the grip is actually offset by half a stud length around the entire grip cover to help give more of a dynamic look to the whole grip. And honestly, this detail I feel would have been a lot easier to catch if I had added the different color scheme, but we all know how that one went down. And another aspect to this is the addition of the Technic system on the inside of the weapon, and this was essentially added because all the weight that normally goes into the front of the weapon would just break a normal grip design of mine, so to help compensate for that, a Technic barb helps provide a secured connection between the gun and grip cover, which surprisingly can withstand an impressive amount of pressure and weight and honestly has to be one of my favorite aspects to this entire build. Up next we have the magazine and magazine well for the weapon, and if we take out the magazine here, we can see that it's the standard box magazine that can hold up to 32 rounds of 9x19 Parabellum. It even includes little details like the stoppers along the sides, as well as the bottom plate, and there is even a cutout on the right side, which is actually intended for the magazine release, and it's not really the most perfect mag release system, but it does definitely get the job done. Besides that, there are some details that are built into the magwell of the gun, like how half of it is actually built out of some sideways plates to help make the gun as thin as structurally possible, but this design does still make it a little bit fragile, so to help add some strength back, a little rubber band is added towards the bottom, and it's pretty subtle to the point where it is even barely visible enough to catch. The stock on this weapon is something that I find to be pretty cool in design. The stock can allow the weapon to be only 25 inches in length, but once folded out can reach a length of about 33 inches, making it a fairly decently sized submachine gun. And the design even uses some upside down techniques for the ring plate, but I have to admit, this whole stock in actual use isn't really my favorite. I felt like I was pretty limited to what I could properly do with the stock, so I ended up going with the pushpin design with an axle piece, which is actually pretty similar to how I built my Uzi stock design. The stock swivels out from the bottom, and then the pin from the top would actually be pushed back into place, locking down the entire stock completely. Surprisingly, even though I feel like it's not that much of a heavy stock, there's still an incredible amount of bend and wobble, especially when it's folded into place. I even added these little rubber stoppers around the arms of the stock to help mitigate this issue, but it still refuses to hold itself into proper place. And I won't lie, this has to be one of those weapons that I truly feel would be a lot better without the addition of the stock. Not only do you lose the wobble, but you can even see the receiver area a lot more without the stock piece in the way. In reality though, I'm not even sure if it's possible to remove the stock from the whole pistol grip configuration, so I'll just keep it on for the remainder of the video. Also, we do have some sling mounts on the weapon, one located near the barrel of the gun, while the other one is right above the stock area. 
And of course, just like you would expect, this definitely does take the addition of a sling and still counts as being 100% LEGO because it is an actual LEGO sling. But as far as using the sling actually goes, the one near the back could actually handle a substantial amount of weight, but definitely the one in the front could not take any weight whatsoever because of the way the sling mount was actually built. And the sling mount is pretty annoying to deal with, so I'll just take it off for the moment. And finally, we are at my favorite part of the weapon, which happens to be the bolt system. And this weapon, as you all may know, does run on an open bolt system, so to make this weapon a little bit more authentic, this weapon actually does release the bolt once the trigger has been pulled, and it is a little bit finicky at times, but for the most part, is pretty solid. It even has different attributes similar to that of the actual MP40 bolt. When the bolt is forward on the real gun, you have the option to push the bolt into the gun, which actually locks it down so no accidental fire could occur while carrying or transporting the weapon. And on my model, I just flip the bolt up into place and it will actually lock down the same exact way. Another thing is that the bolt can even be pulled back all the way and then twisted upwards into the safety notch and what this does is physically lock the bolt back so it can't even move forward and slam fire around at all. And I'll admit, it was pretty tricky to get all of these features to work out together, but I think I did a pretty decent job of it all. The barrel was another part that was kind of difficult to get right. My biggest issue when designing this was actually getting the barrel to properly connect to the barrel nut area, and luckily I did actually get a hold of these strange corner pieces that helped close in on the barrel nut and completed the overall look. Besides that, we have some little details like the muzzle at the end, and even the sign alignment rod down below, but right above that, we have the small ring sight, which will actually help segue to my next part, which are the iron sights. And this weapon does feature the front ring sight, as well as the rear pistol sights, and they're fairly crude, especially with automatic fire, but given the fact that it is only a submachine gun, doesn't mean that high acquisition is really all that necessary. However, the rear sight does have an adjustable piece in the back that actually helps the weapon to go from a 100 yard range to 200. So who knows, maybe long range tap firing could be beneficial. So, in conclusion, the MP40 is a very odd weapon to behold and had even given me many challenges when it came to not only the designing, but even the construction of the gun. Either way, it's great to see how far I have actually progressed on this design since the last time I attempted to build this weapon, and to see how many features can work together without sacrificing too much detail. So with all that said, I'd say we finally test out and see what this gun can actually do. So, subscribe if you guys want to see more World War II builds later in the future, like, favorite, and comment if you have enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching.